Now that the 6600 XT is launched and we've had time to digest the situation so far, it's much easier to weigh in what the story is with this new GPU. There's some really polarizing opinions on the card that I've seen in our comment section alone. People either think it's great value based on the market in their region, or it's really bad value based on the region that they're in. Really big differences in opinions here. AMD said that the availability for the 6600 XT would be a whole lot better this is kind of true from what I've observed over the last few days. It all depends on your region though. However, again, as of filming this video, it seems like the first wave has already dried up. And I think we're just gonna have to wait and see a little bit later to see what the whole story is. Now that we have an idea about pricing and availability though, is the 6600 XT going to be worth your money if you can actually find one? Let's find out. MSI sent over their Gaming X version for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux to see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've tested on this test bench right here. Now there's a lot of data to unpack with all these videos as usual, and there's chapters in every single one of our GPU videos, so if you want to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as using that little progress bar down there, mousing over the chapter, clicking on the chapter you want to see, and Bob's your uncle. There's also timestamps in the description as well. Also, all of that aside, make sure you watch this whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say here. We used our regular test bench for this video as it gives you guys accurate results based on the same testing hardware for every GPU that we've tested over the last 15 to 18 months. All right, let's dive in. Let's kick it off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic pause button at any time to pause this video to take a look at the graphs for a little bit longer. The first thing you're probably noticing is that at 1080p, both 6600 XT are coming in just above the 5700 XT. In Linux at 1080p, the 6600 comes in well behind the 3060 Ti. Be aware that this kernel combo and pre-release driver is the only combo that worked at the time of testing this GPU. If we compare Windows versus Linux performance, Windows comes out on top by only 2 frames per second. In Windows at 1440p, we're seeing the MSI 6600 XT Gaming X is about two frames faster than the ASUS card. If we look at the Linux performance, we're seeing that the MSI 6600 XT comes in just behind the 5700 XT. And if we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing Windows come out on top by a considerable amount. At 4K, we're seeing the performance for both of the 6600 XTs that we tested and the 3060 being about on par. The performance here for 4K is quite underwhelming. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing almost the same story that we did with Windows with the 3060 edging out the MSI 6600 XT Gaming X by about two frames. If we compare Windows and Linux, we're seeing that Windows came out on top once again. All right, time for some superposition. For these tests, we use three tests in total, 4K optimized, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. Let's see what the story is. First up with the 1080p extreme benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the MSI 6600 XT Gaming X beat out the 5700 XT by about two frames. In Linux at 1080p Extreme, we're seeing that both 6600 XTs pull away from the 5700 XT and the RTX 3060. If we compare Windows to Linux performance, Windows comes out on top, but not by a whole lot. At 1440p in Windows, the 6600 XT comes in well behind the 5700 XT and the RTX 3060 Ti. But in Linux, it's the inverse situation with the 6600 XT beating out the 5700 XT. Now, if we compare Windows to Linux, the 6600 XT is faster by two frames in Linux. At 4K in Windows, we're seeing the 6600 XT come in just behind the RTX 3060 Ti and the 5700 XT. In Linux at 4K, we're seeing a pretty similar pattern for both 6600 XTs. If we compare Windows to Linux at 4K, we're seeing them both perform within a few frames of one another. 
All right, lastly, we've got Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a good indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and Linux. Let's do it. At 1080p in Windows, the 6600 XT is pretty mediocre. Don't be fooled by Basemark's high FPS scores here. In Linux at 1080p, the 6600 XT had more of a predictable run. AMG GPUs typically do not perform as well in Basemark. If we compare Windows to Linux at 1080p, the Windows results are all over the place and I spoke about this in the last video as to why that was the case. At 1440p in Windows, the test is a lot more predictable here with the 6600 XT getting absolutely beaten by the 3060. In Linux at 1440p, we're seeing the 6600 XT get slapped down by the 3060 Ti. If we compare Windows to Linux, we can see that in Windows, Windows is coming out on top, but not by a whole lot, especially when Basemark is concerned. At 4K in Windows and Linux, we're seeing the same trend that we saw with 1440p, with Windows coming out on top, but the gaps are very, very tight here. We ran our one hour stress test in Ida64, and we couldn't get the MSI 6600 XT Gaming X above 49 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. This result was a lot better than I expected, but also be aware of the hotspot temperatures here as well. They tell a little bit of a different story. I always mention this, but it's important to note that we're running all of these tests on an open air test bench. The results in a closed system will be far different from what we recorded here. We include this result because our open air testing environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested. I've seen some comments lately with people saying 18 degrees is too cold. It's climate controlled, so we can give you everything the exact same way. As far as power consumption at idle, it was only drawing around 3 watts of power. This is one of the lowest power draw figures I've seen for a very, very long time. We observed it hitting a board power draw, maxing out at around 144 watts at full load over a period of one hour. We observed the MSI card to be audible. There's no coil line here, and there was none of that over our entire stress testing period. As I already mentioned, we run an open air test system. You're gonna hear everything in a closed system. I don't think you're gonna hear this card. The acoustic observations that we do here, they just make more sense than all these numbers that other people put on screens because they just don't make sense to a regular punter. Acoustics are only tangible if a system is sitting on the desk right next to you. And most of the time you guys are wearing headphones. So none of that matters anyway. The MSI 6600 XT Gaming X uses a single PCIe power connector, one of the eight pin ones. It's got some RGB on the MSI logo and it can be controlled with MSI's Mystic Light. It's also a 2.5 slot card that measures around 277 millimeters in length. As far as availability for this particular 6600 XT from MSI, there is some availability here in Australia. It's a little bit sporadic though. You know, some places have it, some don't. The price is, is what it is. And as far as availability in your region, I can't tell because I don't live there, so I'm not sure. As far as pricing for the MSI CC600 XT Gaming X, it's going for around 579 US dollars or around 829 Australian dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, all of that is subject to availability. Now, I want to go back to what I said at the start of this video. There's two really big polarizing sides to the whole 6600 XT story. A lot of people are saying that they think it's worth it. Others are saying that it's too expensive. Now, if we weigh up the performance of this card versus comparable cards like the 3060 and 3060 Ti, the 6600 XT is looking like it's good value when you look at those other prices. However, just because they're the prices of those other cards does not automatically mean the 6600 XT is a good value card. It doesn't mean anything. I think this card should be somewhere around the 300 US dollar mark, not upwards of 500 US dollars. And yeah, I get it. There's a couple of these cards that are underneath that mark, but the MSRP for most of these cards is too high regardless of if you think it's good value or not. I also understand the other side of the argument with people saying that this is their only option to getting a GPU right now. 
I fully understand where you're coming from. If this is your only option and there's no other choice, I'm not gonna tell you not to buy it. All I'm saying that I just think that these cards are way too expensive for what you're getting. And that's why I'm not excited about it. Anyways, what do you guys think about the 6600 XT now that it's somewhat out in the wild? I've seen lots of comments with people saying that they picked them up for uh, either the MSRP or a little bit more. Some people have said less. You guys already know how I feel, so I'm not gonna talk about this anymore. If you guys like this video, you know what to do. Hit the like button. If you hated it, hit the dislike button twice. Yep, I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak, we seek. GPUs, still a thing of contention with lots of people, huh? What do you reckon, Claire? Yeah. Mm. Should we do some magic again? People like my magic. Okay. Yeah, magic, ready, magic trick? Magic. Ready? See, how good's my magic? All you can see is a GPU box on the table. It's pretty magical. Mm, it's nice that you're not there. Uh, my name's Claire. I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>